All right, hello all. Let us discuss some of the arteries that are going to be associated with the wrist and the hand. And as we can recall from active learning sessions that the, the main supply for the wrist and the hand is going to be from the radial as well as the ulnar arteries, similar to what you had in the forearm. Because at this point, the, the brachial artery has turned into its terminal branches, and so all you have left is the radial and the ulnar. Now remember the radial is always going to be on the lateral side, and the ulnar will always be on the medial side, and we know that certain things are medial and lateral because first digit is always going to be lateral when we're talking about the hand. Fifth digit will be the most medial. So that can kind of help you in terms of when you're trying to determine which side is going to be associated with the radial and ulnar. So if you see, if you're looking here in terms of the wrist area, you see two arteries, and you know their arteries, and we would ask you for specifically an artery, but you know their arteries because they do look a little bit more squiggly. That is not always what's gonna happen in terms of, say, the tendons, or in terms of the nerves. So you can see two different arteries here. So, which one do you think is going to be the more medially placed one? The medial, we know, should be the ulnar. So that is the ulnar right there. Whereas you can see, on this side, this would be the radial. And you can even palpate, particularly the radial, about where this would be located on yourself in terms of where it's entering the wrist before it kind of dives towards the more dorsal side to get to the anatomical snuff box. So that, that's a really nice place to be able to, to palpate and fill that pulse point for the radial artery. Now you can see here that the transverse carpal ligament has been um, transected in order to show how the ulnar artery is getting into the hand area. And you can see that it is kind of going up into this more distal region to be the dominant supply for the superficial palmar or arterial arch, which you can see here. Now the radial artery does send contributions there, so you don't see those particular branches, but do be aware that the radial artery is playing a role, but the ulnar artery is going to be the dominant supply of the superficial palmar arch. Now, we do not have an image of the deep palmar arch in, on this particular session, but you can tell that you're looking at a, the superficial because you can still see um, some of the lumbricals that are deep to that. You can see the more superficial thenar compartment muscles as well as the hypothenar. So we're looking at the superficial palmar arch in this particular image. The deep palmar arch as would be suggested, is going to be deeper, and we would have to do a deeper dissection in terms of uh, moving or reflecting these muscles in order to see that. The deep palmar arch's primary supply is going to be the radial artery with some contribution from the ulnar artery. So those are the basics in terms of being able to identify the arteries both in the wrist as well as in the hand. And please do feel free to reach out to us with any questions regarding the arteries or anything else associated with this session. Please have a great rest of your day.